Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a Dupixent update because I posted one back in September, but um, a lot has changed since then, and I wanted to show you guys my progress and how I maintain my skin. So, yeah. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the injection, of course. Um, so I've been taking Dupixent injections since December of 2018. It is currently May of 2020. So I've been on the injection for a, about a year and a half now. Um, I was kind of inconsistent in, in the beginning because of all of the insurance chaos. So if you are getting prescribed this drug right now, make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row. So you wanna have um, written documentation of all of the topical steroids you've used. Um, any doctor's notes on like your skin progress and not lack of progress everything um, and also I just had an iPhone album of terrible pictures of my skin and it had like 120 pictures in it like it's kind of crazy it's called skin like it helped me um, get this prescription so those are some things that I recommend you have on hand because it is chaos trying to get this injection. It's very expensive if you don't have insurance coverage for it. I live in the United States, by the way. So if you're not from the United States, this might not apply to you. Um, but yeah, it's really expensive. Um, and I was trying to qualify for a zero dollar copay and everything. So I had to have all of that documentation in order to get my injections coming in and they didn't come in until probably like April or May. So that's kind of like why I'm doing this video now. It's been an actual year of consistency. Um, so yeah, so make sure you have all of that ready to go. Um, so yeah, I started taking it consistently around then I actually had to do the two injections over again. So the very first time that you are given the injections, um, you're given two. Mine are 300 milligrams. Some people, um, I've never met anybody, but apparently people have 150 milligrams and that's getting more and more common than it used to be. Um, mine, I'm pretty sure everyone just had 300 because that's what I'm still being given. Um, and yeah, so I don't know what you guys have, but the very first time I was given 300, um, I had to do two injections. The first one, a nurse did it and she did it in my upper thigh. She told me that was the spot that everybody likes to use. So that's what we did. And then um, she had to watch me do it to make sure that I know how to do it right. And if you wanna watch a video on me doing it in my upper thigh, you can do that. Just click on the eye. I'm pretty sure it's on the side, in the upper corner. Um, and you're able to click on that video. It's just a quick three minute tutorial. Um, yeah, so I was doing it in my thigh for a long time. Um, and I hated doing these injections. Like, I'm not scared of needles. I don't mind shots at all. I prefer shots over many other things that people could be doing. Um, so yeah, I really didn't mind. I preferred it over using topical steroids because I hate feeling sticky and I just, I hated the feeling of it. So yeah, I was so down to do them, but I found that the medication, not the needle itself, but the medication stung really bad and it made like my leg kind of swell up and I got some bruises and I'll show some pictures. I'm not trying to scare anybody um, because there is a better ending to this, but yeah. So here are some pictures of my legs um, and they were bruising a lot and I just kind of hated it and I started having like my friends or my mom or whoever I could find do them in the back of my arm. So I did them like if you were to pull up the sleeve in the very back, like the chunkiest spot, like you don't want to do it here, but like here. So yeah, so that's where I was having people do them for me and they hurt, but I just was like, whatever, like somebody else is doing it. It's not in my hands, like whatever. Um, but I'm pre-nursing and for me, I just, I don't know. I found a lot of um, value in just being able to do it myself. Um, if you don't struggle with this, just ignore me. Keep having other people do it if you prefer that. Just ignore what I'm about to say. But um, for me, I just felt like I wanted to be able to do it myself and to take care of myself and have all of my health in my own hands. Um, so I just, it really bothered me. So I just needed to make myself do it. So I was doing it in my legs um, and it just still bothered me how much of like a little lump I was getting. And it, in that video that I filmed, you could see the little lump that I was getting. Um, if you, I don't know why that happens um my doctor and the pharmacist were saying that you can ice it before to help and i hated that i did not like icing it before it just felt weird um 
or just find a fatter spot on your body. So if you are a petite type of person, make sure you're finding a chunky spot on your body. Um, and for me, the chunkiest spot I could use was my stomach. So that is when I switched to my stomach. Um, and I do the upper right quadrant. So I will attach right now a tutorial on how to inject your stomach. Hey guys, it's Erica from the past. Um, I wanted to pre-film me giving myself my shot again for this video. And so this is just the day that I happened to take it. And so I went ahead and just turned on my camera to do it. Um, but first, wash your hands. My hands are clean, so I wash my hands. Um, and then you're just gonna take your syringe and there's a little cap on the front. You're just gonna pull that off. Just make sure you pull it straight out because I've definitely cut myself a few times like being reckless with it. So yeah, pull it hard, straight out. It's not gonna break. It feels kind of weird, but it's not gonna break. Um, then have a little band-aid like this, or you could get a real sized one, whatever. Um, and an alcohol wipe. So I'm gonna do it on my stomach. I do it on the like upper right part of my stomach right there. Um, it's just easiest for me because I'm right-handed and so it just goes in well. Um, I will say with the stomach, it's kind of trial and error, like there's some spaces on your stomach that will hurt more and some that will just like not feel much pain at all. Um, so it's really up to you and how you do it. Um, but personally, I do it here, it's just the easiest. It's a little bit more painful for me to do it here right now because I had surgery recently so I have like a little bit more scar tissue. Um, but it's my favorite spot now, so I'm just gonna go to it. And then if you wanna see a video of me doing it on my leg, I will put that in the suggested, there's a little eye card up above me. So click on that if you wanna see me do it in my leg. That's like a quick three minute video. But I opened my alcohol wipe and I'm just going to clean this area. I usually clean like a lot of extra just because sometimes I change my mind when I grab it on like where I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna do this. So with this, you're just gonna pull it straight down. There we go. And then sometimes a little bit comes off, like right now, and that's okay. You're gonna grab that piece, and I go this angle, like, I don't know if you can see, but I'm pushing down towards, towards like my left leg, so that's what I do, but I mean, whatever works for you works for you, you know? And so I'm going to push the needle down this direction and keep it at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so the needle's in and I'm just pushing it down. It helps to breathe through it and just try to not think too much about it. So I'm gonna keep going, it's like halfway in right now. The needle's all the way in, I mean, the medicine's halfway done. And then you're gonna keep going until the very end, it kind of clicks um, and pulls the needle out for you, so you don't have to pull it out. Some people pull it out right before then, but I like to push it all the way in just to make sure I get every drop of the medication. Okay, so it's at the bottom, it's gonna click. And then it automatically retracts back just like that. And then I'm gonna take this Band-Aid. I don't wanna put my shorts back on it, so I'm holding that. I usually use the bigger size, but I did not have any left that I'm not allergic to. Here, I'll show you the site real quick. Or so it just looks like that, just like a little bit red. Sometimes there's a little bump, that's totally fine. It goes away within a few hours. All right, and so yeah. And that's all that there is to it. Um, so I'll let future Erica do the rest of the talking. Okay, so there was also a comment on like how um, far to do it on your stomach and there were some questions asked in the YouTube algorithm and not a lot of videos on it. So I'm going to just show you guys. Um, but my belly button's right here 
and I did the injection right here. So it's about two inches away. Um, you're not supposed to go closer than that, so make sure that you stay with, with outside of that ring around your belly button. So, um, so yeah, so make sure that you're doing that. And I'm gonna show you guys some before and after pictures because there's something that I wanted to address because also on YouTube, there's a lot of videos on people who quit the injections because they feel that they're not working for them. Um, some of these flare up pictures that I'm showing happened while I was on the drug. So I also kind of felt like I should get off of it and that it wasn't working for me. And I was feeling really discouraged. Um, but now my skin is like perfect almost. Like I have flare ups from time to time, but they're so small. I just put like a little bit of topical steroid or I take some Benadryl and it goes away. So I say to those videos um, not to give up on this drug. It's so hard to get, it's so expensive. I just feel so privileged to be able to take it. So I just don't wanna take that for granted. Make sure that you're using it at least for like, give it time, like give it over a year and see how it works for you unless you're having really serious side effects from it or I don't know, talk to your doctors, but I just don't recommend going cold turkey on it. I just, it was, it was such a process to be prescribed and I just wouldn't want to um, try to take it again after quitting it and then it being rejected in my body and I just wouldn't wanna deal with that. So that is my response to people who are getting off of it. Um, but do what's best for your body. I respect it. I just, I just wouldn't do it myself. And that's what I would also recommend to other people is not to do that. But, um, yeah. So I had some side effects from it though. Um, I did get like a slight pink eye, I guess. I don't know. My eyes got like pinkish and like dry, kind of itchy. Um, after I didn't, I didn't start getting that until probably like five months into taking the injections. Um, and I just used Visine, little allergy relief eye drops, and it went away. So that was, that's the only side effect that I ever got, and I don't really get that anymore. Um, if I do, I like hardly really notice it, or I just like blow it off as general seasonal allergies. Like It just doesn't really bother me that much. Um, some people get more side effects than that, but that's I, I got lucky, I guess, and I didn't really have that. So that is everything about my Dupixent, but I also wanted to share some of the products that I use regularly and what I eat regularly in order to maintain the good skin that is healed through Dupixent. So first I wanted to show you guys what I use when I do have flare-ups and stuff. So um, if it's really bad, I'll use a topical steroid or whatever, but this is what I use on a generally regular basis. Um, the first one is this Hawaiian moon aloe. I don't know if you could read that and I'll put the link to all these things down below. This is not sponsored I n none of these are affiliate links or anything. They're just things that I used um, So yeah, this is just like one of these it goes a long way. It's I, can't, I don't know if you could tell but it's kind of like that um, gooey ish kind of cream um, It's not like It's just like it's softer. I don't know how to explain it um, but yeah, I use this on everything, like on sunburns, on like dry skin, on chapped lips, on flare-ups, like everything. And it helps so much, um, just like, especially with the dryness, because that's something that I have problems with is like dryness. Um, so yeah, it just helps a lot and it also just cools the skin and everything. Um, for like face wash, for like acne wash and stuff, I don't really do anything every day. Um, I don't really have like a skincare routine or anything, um, but... I use this when I'm in the shower, probably like twice a week or three times a week maybe. Um, and it's Neutrogena Deep Clean Gentle Scrub. And it says gentle exfoliators, refined skin, beta hydroxy formula, cleans deep down into pores for soft, smooth skin. So I use this. Um, one of the ones that was giving me problems um, are the face washes that have like potato starch in it. And I didn't know that was a thing that is commonly in ingredients, but for me, potato starch was really aggravating my skin. So I found some that didn't. And also my shampoo and some body washes had it. Um, so I had to find some that didn't. So if that's some, that's just a really random thing, but if you have a lot of problems with soaps, you might wanna read the ingredients and maybe you have the same problem that I do. Um, and then I also take Benadryl a lot. Um, since I eat a pretty restricted diet, so I use those because sometimes I can't be perfect and yeah So that helps with that um, And then as far as my diet goes, I eat nightshade free 
um, and I've been eating nightshade free since I was prescribed Dupixent, so about the same time um, I did both. And I've been eating tomato free for a little over two years. So um, nightshades are just like a group of foods that um, were really, 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 really bothering my skin. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, there's not a lot of evidence that backs it up, that it causes it or anything, and I get that. Um, but it's just something that I was noticing while I was doing an elimination diet, and I don't know why I should put something in my body that my body obviously doesn't like. So um, I had that problem, and I told my doctor and everything, like, this isn't something I just did on my own. And they agreed that, like, if that's something that's really bothering my skin and giving me flare-ups, that I should just not eat it. Um, with that being said, I don't recommend cutting out, like, an entire food group or anything without having a doctor's advice or opinion put into that. So just make sure you're still eating like a well-rounded diet. Um, but yeah, I did the nightshade free diet. Um, and that means no tomatoes, no potatoes, um, no paprika, which is a little hard to avoid sometimes because it's a coloring agent. So you have to really look into that. Um, no peppers besides black peppers. So I could eat, I can't eat red peppers and green peppers and bell peppers and chili peppers, none of that. Um, but I could eat like black pepper, like ground black pepper. Um, goji berries are on that list. I might've forgotten some, um, but yeah. So I stopped eating those and that helped tremendously. The reason I stopped eating those is because I noticed that tomatoes, cause I was eating tomato soup a lot, was really, really flaring up my skin. So I stopped eating those for like eight months before I cut out the rest of the nightshades and, um, in between that time, I was still having little flare-ups to little things, and I eventually realized that it was linked to the rest of them, especially like french fries and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I don't eat any of those, and I also, to get from point A to point B, so I was actually having um, like zero flare-ups at all um, for a couple months, like maybe like a month or two, um, but I really wanted to like get to the point where I wasn't having any ever. And so that's when I did the January AIP. So if you want to watch that video, it is also up in my suggested list. Um, and while that did end kind of weird because I ended up getting appendicitis like a couple days later and it kind of messed up my results, um, I still was able to learn foods that were less harmful to my skin and made me feel good. Right now I have makeup on, but it's just a powder. It's not like a liquid, um, I don't know, foundation. I don't know names of makeup. I don't know how to do makeup, but. I just have powder, so I don't put anything like that on my skin, so nothing is being covered up. I don't have any eczema or flare-ups or anything right now, and this is what my skin looks like. So as you can tell, it's pretty much gone. Um, you could tell there's like a little bit of scarring, but it's like not there. Like there's no bumpiness or itchiness or anything. It's just marks, um, and it feels like a normal neck. So I never thought that day would come, but it did. And so that's really exciting. And then my worst spot was my arms. And so these healed up completely and you could still see scars, of course, because I had it my whole life, but it's not itchy, it's not red, it's not flared up. So I really appreciate that. And then same thing with the back of my legs, there's nothing there. So all in all, the products that I use, the things that I eat and the Dupixent has really obviously cleared stuff up for me. All right, so I hope this helped answer some of y'all's questions and hopefully give you guys hope that things will get better um, because I know I was feeling pretty discouraged last summer after taking it for like, I had been prescribed in December and taking it somewhat consistently and I was just kind of frustrated. So I hope that this helped answer some questions and give you guys some optimism and hope. Um, and if you have any questions, comment them down below. If you have answered to people's questions, comment those down below. I try to respond to every single comment. I probably will be able to respond. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'm a small YouTuber and I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time.